Yes, that's right, Pokemon Sword is now playable on Game Boy. Hi all. Something a little different for this video, I've made a game, kind of. <laughs> Last week we saw some perhaps leaked footage from Pokemon Sword and Shield's first town, and when I saw it, for no particular reason, I thought it'd be really fun to recreate it as a Game Boy game. Just to be clear, this is a fully working Game Boy ROM. You're actually seeing footage right now from a Visual Boy emulator. There's a link in the description below where you can download the game for yourself, and I'd love for you to try it out and play it. It's not entirely perfect, I think there are a few little bugs in there, but I ran out of patience and decided, no, it's done, I'm going to send it out onto the internet and not worry about it anymore. I'm not going to show off everything in the game today, but I just thought I'd give you a little bit of a tour of the town, show how it compares to some screenshots from the footage of the actual town from Pokemon Sword and Shield on the Switch, uh, and just let you guys have a look at it. This game, if you can really call it that, I'm not sure you can, is a wonderful tool that was developed by Chris Maltby and lets anyone create their very own Game Boy games without any need for coding, which is a real blessing for me because I cannot code to save my life. I've been wanting to make something with the program for a while now. I've got pretty far with a Game Boy demake of Persona 5, but it was just too big of a task. I figured that making Sword and Shield's first town would be just a lot more achievable, because it's something I could do in a few days instead of a few weeks or months. Now, obviously, I know very little about what actually happens in the Switch version of this game, the official version. So I did have to improvise, and I've had a lot of fun filling it in with Easter eggs and dumb jokes. It's possible to die, in inverted commas, in two places, and there is another hidden spot where you can tear a hole in the fabric of reality and create a time paradox. Just to be clear, I created custom tiles for the exterior buildings, uh, but I've used sprites from the Pokemon games, and I've used a lot of interior tiles and inconsequential things like grass and trees, just for the sake of ease. So the biggest thing that's unique is the external view of the buildings. I just didn't want to take forever reinventing the wheel when I could have just grabbed things from the original Pokemon games. And this is definitely, by the way, Pokemon Sword and not Pokemon Shield. You can tell that because of the gym leader. I've kind of guessed what different buildings are from the footage that I've seen, but if I've got things completely wrong, I don't think it really matters. It's just a bit of fun. I love that Pokemon Sword and Shield are based on the English countryside, because when I first played the original Pokemon Blue, I of course lived in the English countryside, and I imagined that this was what the backdrop for the game really looked like. Uh, I think one of the great things about the simple Game Boy graphics is you can kind of imagine them to be wherever you want them to be. I won't say that Pokemon Sword and Shield look exactly like I imagined Pokemon Blue looking when I was 11 years old, but it's, it's pretty close. So because of the rural English vibe of this little parody game, when I started putting dialogue into characters' mouths, I kind of started leaning towards a horror theme, like Stepford Wives or The Wicker Man, like rural English horror. There's a bit of hot fuzz in there as well, too. I was also inspired by another great game that's been made in GB Studio, which is Deadius, which I hope I'm pronouncing right, created by Isma, I-Z-M-A. I'll put a link in the description so that you can go check it out for yourself, and a link for GB Studio as well, so you can play with that and maybe build your own game. Deadius is a really effective horror game that I absolutely love, which makes really good use of just how simple everything is on the Game Boy, and it's kind of black and white art style. It looks really cool. And I wanted to try making something vaguely similar, but a lot less serious. This is actually something I've been considering doing more of, making my own games, that is. I had never really thought about game making before we started this channel, simply because it seemed like such a daunting and time-consuming task. I'm the kind of person who has to work really fast on creative projects, because otherwise I just lose momentum and get bored. I guess that's a skill that makes a good cartoonist, but not a good, say, fine artist. Uh, that's part of the reason why YouTube is such a good fit for me, just because I get to draw dumb stuff really quickly. I have to draw it quickly, otherwise I'm not feeding the YouTube algorithm, you know? But game design always seemed like it took too much patience, and that's not my strong suit. But since we've started this channel, though, uh, and in large part because of reading comments from you guys, many of whom are making your own games, it's inspired me to maybe try something, even if they are just small, fun hobby games. GB Studio is basically the perfect practice ground for me, and if this little game is well received, I might like to try wading into Game Maker and making something more complicated, but oh, we'll see how that goes. Part of me has been wanting to give Pokemon Red and Blue the HD remaster treatment, kind of like Wonder Boy the Dragon's Trap, where I redraw everything to make it pretty. Um, but, but I could just as easily make something completely original. I'm not sure. Part of me wishes I'd known about the giant, fat, adorable Pikachu a bit sooner, though. I'd have loved to have put in a reference in here. 
There is a reference to a giant wicker Pikachu, though, so maybe you can take that as deliberate? It absolutely is not. I also found it wasn't easy to give my dialogue room to breathe with the text box design in GB Studio. And if I made something else, I think I might want to switch to Game Maker, actually, just so I don't have to do every single sentence in a few words at a time. It just breaks up the pace. Maybe you'll feel that, maybe you won't, I don't know. But any feedback you can give me at all would be greatly appreciated, just because this is the first time I've done anything like this, and I'd love to know the areas where I could improve and make things a bit better. Also, apologies if it gets a bit dark in places, like, tonally. My humour doesn't normally go there. <laughs> maybe I'm just not having the best time at the moment and it's shining through. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I've had a lot of fun making this. It's not very long, it's just a bit of fun, but hopefully you'll get something from it. Just give it a try, see what you think, and uh, let me know. If you want to be super helpful, please do share it with anyone else you think might enjoy it. If you're going to do so, though, please do share the link to this video rather than the direct file with people, and that's simply because I measure my self-worth by how many views the videos get, and I'd appreciate a boost at the moment, to be honest. But thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and if there is any other dumb Game Boy D-Make projects you'd like me to take on, do let me know. Thank you very much.